Hi guys, <clears throat> with this video I'm starting a new series uh, on the Python programming language and this series will take you from zero knowledge to become an advanced Python programmer. <clears throat> of course, uh, please remember that this video series is only a part or one part of your Python development. The other part is that you continuously practice by coding in Python. And I advise you that you not just watch the videos, but use what you learn to build your own projects. The more projects you build, <clears throat> the more problems you solve, uh, the more accomplished you become in Python. Start, start basically with very small microscopic projects and move slowly but surely uh, to more important and bigger projects. You will see that the bigger the projects become, uh, the more planning you'd have to do before coding a single line. Now, uh, coming to Python, what is what is Python? Well, uh, Python is a general programming language, and with it, you can do a lot of stuff. For instance, you can do web development. You can develop desktop uh, applications with it. You can develop simulation or uh, data analysis uh, uh, software. You can even develop embedded software for the Raspberry Pi. So as you see, it's quite uh, very multifunctional, very wide ranging language, and it's very easy to learn. Uh, basically, personally, I use uh, Python a lot to build certain prototypes for software. And why? Because Python is very fast to learn and very fast to develop software with. And then once the software is, let's say, ripe, you can either decide, okay, you know what, I'm going to keep it in Python, or you develop this software in a different or this module or this function in a different language if you need more speed for instance you do it in C or whatever you see but Python is basically a, 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 an easy way to quickly develop or implement the ideas you got um, now Python is an interpreted language what does that mean well let me just uh, draw something here Basically, in, uh, in computer programming, you have basically two types of languages. You have compiled languages, like for instance, the language C is a compiled language. When you develop your code in C, you would first have to compile that code into machine code, and this machine code then executes or gets executed on the hardware, on your computer hardware. With Python, it's different. Python, you write your code and you can immediately executed it gets executed in something called an interpreter or virtual machine if you wish and this interpreter converts your python code to machine code now compiled languages when you compile every time you change something in your c code you would have to recompile it so basically this is a very t especially if you got a big program it's tedious and time consuming process however the end result that 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 application is relatively fast because it is it is directly communicating or working with the hardware. With Python, it's the other way around. It's very fast to implement your program in Python. However, due to this uh, interpreter uh, in between, between your Python code and the hardware, it slows things down. Python is not a slow program, or let me, let me put it this way, Python programs are not slow, but they're relatively a bit slower than uh, compiled programs. That's why you have this difference. That's why Python is very interesting. If you quickly want to develop stuff, Python is very interesting. You don't, you don't have to recompile every time you change something. You just change it, run it, see how it goes, you see? Uh, other examples of compiled programs are, for instance, uh, uh, Go from Google. This is a new language called Go. You'd have C++. These are further compiled. Uh, language. Uh, interpreted languages you would have like JavaScript that would be another one uh, PHP is another one which is interpreted 
So this is the kind of uh, the difference between uh, the various types of computer languages. Now Python, because Python is interpreted, this makes it also very portable. That means the same code you write for, let's say, a Windows machine, you can implement that code one-to-one -one on a Macintosh machine or on a Linux machine. No problem, because on each machine, each machine would have a different interpreter. This interpreter would, develop, would, would interpret your same code into different machine code depending on the machine it's supposed to work on. So your code, you just code your code once, and that code would work in, in let's say, 99.9% .9 of the cases on all of the machines, okay? So that makes Python very portable, very interesting, and makes you basically platform independent. It, it doesn't matter where you develop your software, it's gonna work on the other platforms, assuming these platforms have a Python interpreter. Now, Python was, in, uh, was uh, developed in the late 1980s by Guido van Rossen, and you have basically with Python uh, two uh, versions. You have the 3.x version. I think the actual version is 3.5 something. And this is the newest version in Python. And there's an older version called 2.x. I think the latest is 2.77 something. <coughs> And if you're starting off with Python, it's uh, best to start with three, with a version three. However, if you uh, need to uh, um, update or develop uh, uh, some some older application which is was built with two with version two, you might have to start off with two. The difference is that the problem is that version three brought a lot of changes to Python which are not backward compatible to version two. So if you, let me put it this way, if you're basically uh, building applications from scratch or starting to learn the language from scratch, well then start with three. If you are uh, dealing with older programs, legacy programs, then check out if two is interesting because uh, like I said, a lot of changes in three are not backward compatible to two and a lot of frameworks um, programmed in two have not been uh, changed or adopted or adapted basically to uh, to version three. Uh, this series is gonna focus on three. We're gonna focus on three. However, uh, certain elements which are different between three and two, I will mention. So basically, if let's say, for instance, the print statement is slightly different in three than in two, so I will, I will first show you how it's done in three, and then I will say, you know what? In version two, you would have to do print like this, okay? And so on. So uh, so that's the, there's a lot, of, not a lot of difference, but like, you know, I'm gonna mention those differences, but like I said, if you are starting new in Python, I would, uh, advise you to start with version 3 because there's no reason for you to uh, go off on version uh, 2. Now where do you kick off with Python? Well, uh, just let me fix that. Uh, one, one way to kick off with, first thing is when you're starting off with Python is to visit python.org and in python.org go to downloads and here you can download either version 3, 3.52, which is actually the newest version right now, but you know at a later date that number will change, or uh, to the version 2.7. <coughs> That's You can actually also download both if you wish. I have both on my machine, so it doesn't matter. And uh, once you install them, you would have an application called idle. In your in your downloaded uh, Python folder, there's an application or a, or a or a or a file called Idle. Once you start that, you get this interactive um, Python mode, and there you can already start writing Python. For instance, one plus one. If I press return, I get the result two. Or print um, uh, hello, for instance. Okay, and that's my already my first Python code. Okay, so you can here uh, uh, in this interactive mode, you can test certain uh, uh, code snippets or code segments you wish to test quickly. You just type in here, press return, and you can see how it works. If you wish to write bigger programs, we will then be using uh, here a new file. And here we can write then uh, longer modules. And once done, we can then run them under run and run module or press F5, you do the same, you get the same effect. Now, this is one way of doing things. 
Another way is to get yourself an IDE, an integrated development environment. There are two you could use that I know of that which are uh, free, and you can use there are probably much many more, but two uh, that I that I uh, will be using in this series are first of all Visual Studio from uh, Microsoft. You can download the Community Edition, which is quite. Uh, performing uh, software you can with this you can also develop uh, in other languages like visual basic visual c visual c plus plus etc and python so that you can download this or you can go to uh, pycharm which is uh, by the way visual studio is f uh, community edition is free and you can also have oh yeah and before i forgot uh, in uh, in a lot of companies uh, the visual studio community uh, version is not accepted you can also download the visual studio express version with that you can also program in python if you are in a corporate network and you know your company doesn't allow the community version and they're not planning to buy the professional visual studio then you can get the express version that uh, is not tied down to any uh, copyright because the community version if i'm not mistaken is only allowed for private persons for private people so if you are in a corporate end or you're in a company, uh, most probably you can't use it. So get the Visual Express version and uh, the Visual Studio Express version. Right. Another one is PyCharm, also free. You can download that. And this, that those are uh, IDEs, uh, basically uh, integrated development environments, which have much more functionality than the idle application uh, of your downloaded Python. So this is basically the kind of uh, applications we'll be working with. And um, so basically, going back, uh, why, why Python? Well, Python is, first of all, easy to learn, as, as you will see, very powerful, can be applied to a lot of domains, and it's free and open source. And uh, in the next video, we'll be starting with Python, and the first subject we'll be dealing with are variables.